time and time to grind radio. Good morning. If it's, this is your first time here and your first time seeing me, welcome. I am Trey Kearney. I'm the creator and the host of the Woman to Woman show where we remove men from the equation to hold women accountable for their messiness. Yes, we do. And I'm also the author of the book, It's Healing Time, Restoring Hope in Women After Infidelity. And soon to be book number two, author of the book, It's Healing Time, Men Hurt Too, which is coming out 6 17, 18 on Father's Day. I'm so excited. Hey, Team Arlene. Good morning. Hey, One Miss D. Hey, PYT. Hey, Mr. Brewington. Hey, Chef Primo. Chef Primo, I need some of your food because your food be looking good. Hey, Toya. Hey, Bridget. That food be looking good. I, I need to taste your food. When, when's your next pop-up? Please tell everybody, Chef Primo, where you're from and when is your next pop-up or where they can um, purchase your meals from. Today is a great day to love yourself. Yes, it is. I love that, C-Money. I've been up since 5 a.m. because I teach um, Abundant Life Camp, which is uh, Dr. D.C. Marshall's program, Abundant Life Camp. It's um, a resource for women who want to do better, be better, go higher, who want to learn spiritual growth and personal development. And today I taught on seed and harvest. Your book has been helping me with my relationship with some of my family members. Thank you, Kay. Thank you. Thank you so much. The book, see people here, Restoring Hope in Women After Infidelity. The book is for anybody who needs to heal. Anybody who has relationship hurt of any kind, my book will help you because I've been through some things and I shared that. Thank you so much for the nice hair. I've been through some things and I shared that and I was transparent and your book been helping me raise my, listen, let's see. Okay. Let me just block you. Cause I don't even got time today. Cause it ain't even freestyle Friday. So I got to watch what I'm saying, but it could be wild out Wednesday. If you mess with me, see, cause I could go there. I could go from Christian to Cardi B in 0 0.5 seconds. I really can, but I try not to, but people always want to press. Hey, Alexandra. So, um, I was going to talk about this. Uh, I think this was Monday. I was supposed to talk about this because, uh, one of my followers inbox quickly, fast and in a hurry while out Wednesday, let's not change this. Today is not the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See my people will get you. Hey Val girl, you know, I'm here for you. If you need me, you know, you could call me anytime, any, anytime, any time of day, any time of night. So I was supposed to talk about this on Monday. Because a lot of women think that the man who broke you, who didn't break you, because nobody can't break you. You Listen, I thought he broke me, but he bruised me so God could use me. Somebody hurt me deeply. Somebody traumatized me, but he didn't break me. I thought he broke me, but he bruised me so God could use me. But so many women think that the person who hurt them, the person who committed infidelity, the person who cheated or committed adultery, whatever way you want to, whatever way you want to say it, can fix you. He can't fix you because he didn't break you. He can't heal you because he's not God, right? So let's talk about this. And I've been through this from both ends of the spectrum. I have been the cheater, a hot 16. Am I rapping? <laughs> Y'all know I will go in. I have been the cheater. And I have been cheated on terribly, right? So I thought the person who cheated on me owed it to me to make me feel better. I really did. And I thought I wanted him to fix me, right? But what I didn't, I did not really want him to fix me. And I'm speaking from my experience. I'm going to be truthful and transparent. I did not want him to fix me. I wanted to break him for what he had did to me. So in order, the reason why the person who hurt you cannot help you is because you don't want them to help you. You want them to feel your pain. You don't want them to fix you. You want them to, you want to break them. You don't want to heal. You want to cause this person pain. You want to justify, punish, and torture. And you are willing to compromise your happiness to make this happen. If you are not, what they say, stay woke. If you are not aware, if you are not woke, you will think that you want this person to help you heal when really what you want to do is hurt them. You want them to feel your pain. You're like, he needs, he can fix me. He broke me. He need to fix me. You don't want to be fixed. You want to break him. You want to bring him down to his knees. I know I was there. There was no amount of I'm sorry that could have fixed me. He was sorry every day. It ain't make me feel no better. I don't care. 
He can't fix you. He didn't break you. Most of us, listen to this, and it's going to hurt some women. Because I'm about to step all on your toes and all up in your mess and in your backyard. I'm about to get you right now because you need to be gotten and you need to be heard. Because you expecting somebody to fix you that didn't break you. Because guess what? Most of us that came in a relationship already broken or feeling broken. We already met, already came into the relationship in a deficit. We already came in a relationship in the red. We already came in a relationship depleted from the last relationship that we didn't heal from. So now we already then came into this relationship expecting this person to make us happy. And then when they go somewhere because the relationship is not whole and solid and go sleep with somebody else, now we got a reason to punish them. We already came in on a negative. We already came in with our finances broken. You were broke when you chose him. That's right, Mr. Brewington. We came in with a broken heart. We came in with a broken pocketbook. We already came in hurting, looking for somebody to heal us. When you put that kind of pressure on another person and vice versa for some of the men that's coming, they already came in broken. They already came in bruised. They already came in looking for a savior. To put that kind of pressure on somebody is going to cause the relationship to fail. So I wanted to say that some of y'all ladies, y'all coming in these relationships and already expecting somebody to fix you because you was already broke. And then things are going to happen in relation. I'm not saying infidelity for everybody. But things are going to happen in the relationship, whether it be financial, spiritual, mentally, emotionally. Things are going to happen. So if you already came in depleted, upset, feeling rejected, on a rebound, it's already a recipe for disaster. So now we've gotten to the relationship with somebody and infidelity has taken place. He has cheated. He has betrayed you. You feel traumatized. And I, I get, you know, this, this is my life's work. This is my purpose. This is my passion. This is what God has told me to do. Now, the, now we're in a different scenario and infidelities happen in your relationship. He can't fix you. I don't care how many times he says sorry. I don't care how transparent he is. I don't care how many passwords he give you. I don't care how remorseful he is. I don't care how many people he cuts off, or how many social media pages he cuts down. Your cheating spouse can't fix you because you have to want to heal. And most of the time when women get hurt, there is nothing worse than a scorned woman. I'm tell there is nothing worse than a woman scorned. Most of us can't get past the anger, the red. So we already operating in false a false, we already a false read. We already faking it. Like we wanna, I want this relationship to work, and I know you're sorry and you're remorseful and you cheated. But in our mind, I am going to get him. Subconsciously, we're not really saying this to ourselves, and I'm speaking from experience. I really was like, I forgive you. But it was this little ugly thing inside of me that wanted to torture him. It was this little ugly thing inside of me that wanted to hurt him. It was a little ugly thing inside of me that wanted to control him. That said, you cheated, I have the power now. He gonna pay for what he did. That's right, Dorney. You cheated, I have the power now. I have the power because now you owe me. But what I was really doing was torturing myself. Because I knew, not after the first time, the second time, or the third time that he cheated, but I knew after the 762nd time that he cheated that I didn't want to be with him no more. Because it take us a long time, ladies, because we be operating on that thing called hope. I hope he get it right because I don't want to deal with another man. I hope that he understands how he hurt me. I hope. I hope, I hope, I hope. But once we know we don't want to be with that person anymore, we are on a quest for silent revenge. We will stay. I'm telling you, I stayed and compromised my happiness just so I could say stuff to him like, you lucky I'm here. You the one that cheated. 
You the one that ain't no good. You owe me. You lucky I talk to you. You lucky I let you touch me. While all the while expecting him to fix me, expecting this to fix. I didn't even want, like I said, I didn't even want to be healed. I didn't want to be healed. I didn't want to be whole. I wanted to break and destroy. I wanted to seek, I was like a heat seeking missile. Every time I got a chance, I wanted to take a jab at him. I wanted to physically assault him sometimes when I would think about it. So some of y'all need to hear this because you're expecting the person that you're laying next to that you hate. Because I'm telling you, infidelity, cheating, that trauma can make you hate somebody. And hate is not the fruit of the spirit. That's why you're not prospering in any area of your life. You better go look up the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience. I'm just telling you, I've really hated them. I was laying there. Sometimes I really was thinking some stuff. That's when I knew I, that's another time I knew I needed to get out of there. Cause I was like, wait a minute. I could really hurt him. I could really knock the breath out of him right now and not resuscitate him. I'm infidelity, cheating. That trauma does something to you. Cause cheating is a form of abuse. You've been abused. And we think all the time, ladies and gentlemen, we think all the time, girl, I did hurt him. Ooh, girl, you got to tell me about that one. We think all the time that abuse is somebody putting their hands on you. Abuse is somebody, verbal abuse, talking bad to you, doing this. Abuse is somebody cheating on you and they know that you know that they're cheating that's abusive behavior when they won't stop, when they know that you're at home worried about what they're doing and they're still doing it. Cheating is a form of abuse. So after you've been abused by somebody so long, you really just want revenge. Thank you, Jeff. I hope you're not scared, but I'm just speaking the truth. And I'm just speaking the truth from my own experience of I really did not want to be healed. I wanted to hurt him in a bad way. And I knew I couldn't do it because I wasn't going to go sleep with somebody. Cause that's, that's, that was the, that would be the easy thing to do. And that would be, uh, disrespecting my own body. Right. I knew that would be disrespecting me. And that's not the kind of chick that I am. Cause two wrongs don't make a right outright. I didn't want to be the wrong one and let people see, well, you slept with somebody too. So you ain't no better than him. But there were other things that I was doing. There were, I wasn't nice. If you can't be nice to the person no more, it's just time to go. The person that cheated on you cannot fix you. It First of all, personally, is not their job. Because a lot of the stuff that went on in that relationship, I allowed. You show me who you was the first time you cheated. The second time you sealed the deal. The third time you put a nail in it. So them other 764 times, that was all me. That was, that was all me. So not only was I angry at him, I was angry at me for allowing myself to be treated that way and to feel stuck because I had put so much time in the relationship, hoping and praying and wanting and needing and punishing and, and wanting, trying to break him and saying stuff to him and treating him like a dog sometimes because I felt justified. There is no justification in poor behavior. Because if somebody did something to you, you have the right to walk away. But if you act in a fool just like them, you're just as bad as they are. So there are things that set in, right, for us when it comes to infidelity, adultery, cheating, even emotional affairs. Because some people have emotional affairs. They have an affair outside of their home with a woman. They never penetrate. They never go to a hotel. They never sleep together. But they just tell this woman all their deep, dark secrets, everything about you, what's going on in the relationship. And just in case you don't know, that's an emotional affair. When you are dependent on somebody emotionally to help you through your trials and tribulations in your marriage. If it is not with a professional, you are having an emotional affair with somebody. So after you have an affair, women, there are some things that kick in if we are not alert and aware. And this is for the men too, but let's talk to the women today. There are some things that set in that you have to be aware of. 
And men be careful because this is what is said. This is what has set in. And some women do forgive after coaching, after counseling. Because I'm going to tell you this. Nothing changes if nothing changes. If you did not get help, you still have the spirit of contentment in your heart. You still have the spirit of revenge in your heart. Because you didn't get help to deal with what happened to you. It was trauma. It's like not treating a concussion. You still walking around with it having headaches, you got all the symptoms, but you will not go get the help. So things that set in ladies, when we have been betrayed, because that's what infidelity is a form of betrayal, anger, bitterness, resentment, judgment. You think you get to judge this person for the rest of your life. You ain't shit. You a dog. You ain't no man. You think you get to judge this person for the rest of their life. Judgment is one of the worst things that could set in your spirit. Because those who judge will be judged. Just understand. Anything that you put out there, anger, bitterness, resentment, judgment, depression, these are things that set in. Depression, hate is going to come back to you. It's a boomerang effect. Even though you think you're justified and he deserves all these things. What you put out is coming back to you. Why am I not successful at work? Why does nobody not check on me? Why are people treating me bad? Why do people talk to me like that? How are you talking in your house? How are you speaking in your house? Even though you feel justified, you reap what you sow. That's right, Dawny. I was teaching that this morning at 6 a.m. at Abundant Life Camp. If you want more details about that, let me know too. Because we need help. Again, if you just tuned in, we're talking about a person committing adultery cannot fix you. The person who hurt you cannot fix you. Because first of all, when adultery, infidelity, and cheating comes into play, if we don't get the help that we need, we don't want to heal, we want to hurt. We don't want to be whole, we want to break him or her. We want to break them down. And then most of the time, listen to this, this is so, we so bad. We so bad as people because we don't know this. Most of the time after we break them to the point where we feel like we broke them enough, then we leave. Now I'm done. I didn't broke you and now you want me and I'm out of here. I promise y'all, we got to get our spirit and our mind right. Now that I broke you, I'm good. I'm going to leave you broken, distraught, and hurt just like you did me. Now you know how it, oh, now you want me back, huh? Low down. That's right, Romello, it is. But it's what the human spirit does. You hurt me, I hurt you. That's why I'm so glad in this, in this season of my life, it took me a long time to get here. I'm 48 years old. I probably got here about 44. I'm so glad that in this season in my life, I am who I am based on who I am, not what people do, not, not based on external forces, not the way people treat me or my finances. I am who I am based on being a woman of God first and then having integrity in my life. I go around and I treat people the way that I want to be treated for real, for real. Now listen here. I will tell you what you need to be told if you disrespect me, because we're not going to do that. But I'm a different person in this season of my life. If something happens in my relationship now, I got sense enough to walk away, not stay and break another person. Because that's what we do. When somebody hurt us, oh, you hurt me? Oh, I got this. Because in a minute, you're going to come to your senses and you're going to want me. And then I ain't going to want you. Now, that's a broken man is a dangerous man. Be careful. Uh-oh, Jeff, you better speak about that. You, I'm about to bring you on camera because I need the ladies to know. And that's that's the book that I'm writing too, Jeff. Men Hurt Too. I talk about womanizers in, my, in one of my chapters because broken men want to break women so they become women. It's, it's a whole vicious cycle, but we're going to talk about Jeff. I be done popped you on the camera, brother. Don't play no games today. But ladies... You got to be mindful of what you're doing. If you are in a relationship and infidelity has taken place and you have decided to stay, you have to forgive. You have to get help or you have to walk away. You don't have the right to expect the person 
who committed infidelity or adultery or cheated on you to fix you because it's not possible. It is not possible. I don't care how this, listen, my ex, I just always thought you, he was just never remorseful enough. I don't care how remorseful he was. He was just never remorseful enough for me. Who am I to tell somebody that they're not remorseful enough when I'm not inside their head or their heart? But I felt like I had the power to judge him based on what he had done to me. You, he don't, you, that, you ain't even remorseful. It'll never be enough if you're not willing to go do the work by yourself to heal to go get the help that you need from the trauma that you went through. It's never going to be enough. I don't care. Listen, so many women be like, you know, I'm going to be good. He got to give me his password to his computer, his password to his phone. He got to FaceTime me. I don't care if he do all of that stuff. If he going to cheat, he going to, listen, he probably got three phones. So you got the password to the one that he bring in the house. There's another one in the bush outside. That he go dig up in the morning when the sun ain't up on his way out. I'm just trying. Some of y'all think right now he didn't gave me his password. I got keys to his house and I got this and I got that. It's never going to be enough for you. Not in the, in a bush girl. Cause he know right now he know. I'm going to tell you the game of cheating it's real out here. I'm telling you, I lived that life. I had a whole double life. If y'all don't, I had a whole entire double life for like three years. Like I had a whole double, like a whole nother, another apart, had a whole double. Listen, you can't bring the phone. You can't put it in your car because she know now or he know now, right? You can't bring, you can't have a phone nowhere where somebody think that you're going to have a phone. So you might have to dig a hole in the backyard or put it in a fake rock. Or you might have to get you a P.O. box and lock it in there and go pick it up when the post office opened at 9 o'clock. Because you, some things then went down. I saw a face um, Facebook, a man that had a woman on a leash. I, I don't, I'm not even going to address that right now. Because he ain't had her on nothing. She had herself on the leash. We That's why I said, on a woman to, on this platform, we remove men for the equation to hold women accountable for their silliness. Because if a man got any by woman on a leash... Cause she want to be on a leash. The, we going to leave that right there. So let me go over my notes so I can get out of here. Cause I got three minutes. And if you have any questions, you can put them in the man or the woman who cheated on you cannot fix you because you don't want to be fixed. You want to break that person until you get the proper help that you need. This person can't even aid in your healing. A person can't help you heal if you don't want to heal. I don't care how loving, how kind. Because listen, let's be honest. People make mistakes. And people said people cheated. It was a choice. It was a choice. It was a choice. It was a bad decision for some of us. And I'm not going to justify my behavior because I cheated or I'm, gonna, I'm making up excuses. But please, everybody on here, if you've been cheated on, don't ask the person why they cheated. I just want to know the reason why you did it. And then when they give you an answer, don't tell me I'm making excuses. You just ask me why I did it. And the reason why I cheated, because I was immature. If that's not good enough for you, there's nothing. I could, this is what I mean by a person who cheated can't help you heal. Because you're going to ask these questions. People always ask me, why did you cheat? And I could tell them all the time, I'm not, this is not an excuse. But this is what was going on in my life at the time and what I needed. Right? I wasn't getting the attention I needed from my husband because he was working. He was a workaholic. I did not know how to communicate that to him because I was immature. That is not an excuse. That's the truth. People, about people who cheat always gonna cheat. Cheating is you cheat for the you want to cheat always cheat. People grow and mature. Cheating is a, a immature action, and we gotta learn these things, or we're not gonna heal. A person who you are standing in a relationship with, and you want to know why they cheated, because you want to get to the bottom of it, you want to get to the root of it, so you can uproot it. My father was a cheater. You know, a man might tell you, my dad was a cheater, my grandfather was a cheater, all my uncles were cheaters, and you're going to tell them, that's just an excuse. No, that's really not an excuse. That is really the blueprint that I grew up on, that men are not monogamous. 
That is really what I learned from watching my parents. My mother stayed with my father who was a cheater. She served him dinner in front of me and we all knew he was cheating. So I thought that that was normal. And now that I'm in a relationship with you, honey, and your parents were together for 47 years and you haven't experienced this in your household, now you're telling me I made an excuse. No, I'm not making this. I'm telling you what I learned and what I thought. I'm willing to change and grow and mature into learning something new. But don't ask people why they did something and then tell them they're making an excuse. That drives me up a wall. Trey, why did you do that? I did it because I was hungry. That's just an excuse. No, you asked me why I did it. I did it because I stole a cookie because I didn't have no money and I was hungry. It was the wrong thing to do. It's not an excuse, but it's the reason why I did it. I should not have done it. I really understand I should not have done it. So stop staying in relationships with people who cheated on you when you really don't want to heal because you're not only doing yourself a disservice, you're doing all the people around you a disservice because it's a trickle down. When you stay with a man who cheated on you, the whole family has to stay. So when you're going over there crying and talking and playing a victim and making your husband look like the, the villain still, the whole family is suffering through this with you. No, you got to make a conscious choice. Either I'm going to do this in a forgiving, loving, clean slate kind of way, or I'm going to walk away and I'm going to need my family to support me through this. But you can't have both. And you cannot expect that man to fix you, or you cannot expect that woman to fix you. I'm too angry to forgive. Just leave the relationship. I know that's right. Yes, fighter girl. I'm telling you. So today, some of y'all, are in a relationship where your partner has cheated, let's say man or woman, and you are staying and expecting the person to fix you. You are staying and expecting the person to heal you. They can't. They are only a human being who made a terrible decision, a terrible judgment call, who did not know how to communicate, and these are not excuses for anybody because cheating is just not right. But people cheat for several different reasons, but all of it boils down to immaturity. Whether you're immature in your communication, whether you're immature in your uh, ability to control yourself, it's all a form of immaturity. Now you have a decision to make if you decide to stay with a person and you need to understand that they don't owe you their life because they cheated. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you that. I don't owe anybody my life because I cheated 13 years ago. Not the person I cheated on. Not the next man I come in contact with. I do not owe them my life. I'm going to ignore some comments because I, I just don't dull. I don't... I just, the foolishness, because it'll be, like I said, y'all know it's not Freestyle Friday. Y'all know that. So, anybody have any questions? Let me go over my notes so we can get out of here. It's 832. My notes. The person who committed adultery cannot fix you. I don't care how sorry he is. I don't care how many tra how transparent he is, how many passwords you have. If you follow him around jumping out of bushes, I don't care how remorseful he is. I don't care how many people he cuts off or shuts down all the social media in the world. Your cheating spouse can't fix you because you have to want to heal. Now, granted this, if you are a person who really wants to heal, I wish you were around 10 years ago. My marriage probably would have been saved. It's okay. You are where you're supposed to be right now. But if you are a person who wants to heal your spouse, your boyfriend, your fiance, your husband can aid in your healing. If you want to heal, they can definitely help you if you believe that they're remorseful. But nine times out of 10, when you hurting, you ain't remorseful enough. So it's a few women, far and few in between, who immediately can say, I forgive him and I want to do this and not be there to break him. But the majority of us, 
We don't want him to fix us because we're there to break him for what he did to us. And we don't even know that we're doing this. And we're going around pretending like, I forgave him. Our marriage is going to work because I forgave him. I took the high road. I stayed. I, I, I'm, I sacrificed. And all. Please, you torturing that man and you know it. Uh, you have to want to heal. Most hurt women want to justify, punish, and torture. And they are willing to compromise their own happiness to do this. That's the crazy part. Because we want him to feel our pain. So we will compromise our happiness to get there. The things that set in after adultery has been committed. Anger, bitterness, resentment, judgment, depression, and hate. And I'm speaking from experience. Forgiveness takes just one person. Yes. I'm speaking from experience. I didn't want him to fix me. I wanted to break him. I don't care what nobody, I, I just judge me if you want. Yes, forgiveness takes just one person, but reconciliation takes two. That's right, Jeff. And my pastor told a word on that now that you brought that up. And he said, this, this freed me. This freed me. And it's probably going to free some of y'all today and probably free some of y'all when I tell it all the time. He said, forgiveness is free, but reconciliation requires trust and trust is earned. See, we mix forgiveness and reconciliation up. That's why we be in these relationships that we ain't supposed to be in. Because if you forgive somebody, you're supposed to be with them. No, it's two different things. Forgiveness is free because Jesus died on the cross and we get, we get forgiven every day for free because we all doing something. We all, do, we all busy little bees and doing some stuff we know we ain't supposed to do. Even if we have a dirty thought about somebody or we wish bad luck on somebody, we all doing something. We, be, we get forgiven on a daily basis for free. But reconciliation requires trust and trust is earned. Once something happens, trauma on a relationship, cheating, trust has to be earned. It has to be rebuilt. You have to earn my trust. And most of the time, listen, let's just be honest. I want everybody in here to just be honest for like two seconds. Just be really, really honest. Would you, Will you ever really trust the person that cheated on you? That's why. Cheating is a non-negotiable for me. That's why cheating is a non-negotiable for me, right? Because we have, I told y'all we have to have non-negotiables when we go into relationships. We have to have non-negotiables when we go into relationships. So we know what is the deal breaker from the first time they do it. So cheating is a non-negotiable for me because I know that if you cheat on me, I'm never going to trust you again. And that's just my truth. Maybe somebody else would trust the person, but I know deep down in my heart, I would probably say I trust you again. But I know when triggers hit or when something happens, I know I would never trust you again. You'll never trust a person who cheats because cheating speaks to your character. Right. Non-tolerance for cheating. I'm just saying, so we got to be really, really honest with ourselves deep down, even though we want to, because we love the person, right? Because we, we want to be with a person. And sometimes we feel like we got to, we are being punished because we got to let the person go who cheated on us. We didn't do nothing wrong. So we feel like we being punished. God, why am I being punished? He cheated. Why do I got to let the man go that I love that I spent 45 years with and time and money, six kids, whatever. Why I'm being punished? But we have to understand and be honest with ourselves. We want to trust this person again because we want to stay with them. But I promise you, for me, I'm one and done because I know that I'll never trust you again. And everybody deserves a fair chance. Everybody deserves grace and mercy. But in that category right there of infidelity, I know I don't have the grace and mercy. I could forgive you, but I don't have the grace and mercy to stay with you to give you the opportunity to do that to me again, because I've been down that road and I know where it leads. So I'm one and done there. So you have to know what your non-negotiables are when it comes to relationships. So um, like I said, the person who committed adultery, the person who cheated on you can't fix you. It takes work. If you're going to stay, 
You need to get some help. You've been traumatized. This is for real, for real. A lot of people say, get over it. Why don't you just get over it? Why don't you just move on? Why you keep it? Cheating is traumatizing. Betrayal is traumatizing. It hurts and you just cannot get over it. You need help. It has damaged you emotionally. It has damaged you mentally because now it has affected your self-esteem. Why would somebody do this to me? What was it that I wasn't doing? How could I have did this? Why would It has affected you in so many different ways. And all of that leads to stress. And stress leads to disease. I, I'm just, listen, you got to go get help. If there was any form of infidelity in your marriage or your relationship, if it was physical, if it was mental, if it was emotional, you have to get some outside help. Thank you, PY. You have to get some outside help. You have to get therapy. You have to get a coach. You have to work through these feelings or the reason why you're staying is to hurt and to destroy and to pay back. You are not there because you want that person to fix you. You are there because you want to break that person if you have not gotten the proper help. So I got to go. But I love y'all. And I always come on here and I just want to keep it real with y'all so that we can have healthy, whole relationships. So that we can forgive a person who cheated. Because like I said, I got hit by way of committing adultery. I'm not that person anymore. I'm not that I'm not her anymore because I know how to communicate. I have matured in different areas of my life to say that if this happens, I know that I need to communicate this out of my mouth. I know that I need to tell my mate that this is what's happening to me right now. Because the truth hurts, but lies damage. Do y'all understand that? The truth hurts. You tell a person the truth, it might hurt them. They're going to get over it. Because the truth is freeing, but lies damage. And we don't want to go around damaging people. I know I don't. I damaged some people and I'm so glad that I could forgive myself and that God forgives me. And hopefully those people forgave me wholeheartedly. But if they didn't, I hope that they get some help because they need to forgive and they need to get over what happened to them. So many people get left and I wish that I could help them. But like I said, the person who hurt you can't, ain't, ain't responsible and can't make you heal. That's why you got to go get you some help because you didn't carry this on to your other relationship. But I pray for the people who were in my life that got caught in the crossfire of my immaturity. So I love y'all. Go to my website, www.treykearney.com, T-R-A-Y-K-E-A-R-N-E-Y, T-R-A-Y-K-E-A-R-N-E-Y. Get my book, It's Healing Time, Restoring Hope in Women After Infidelity. This book will help you. It's men too. Families, man, I have gotten so many testimonials from women whose husbands have read this book and said, did your book really help my husband? My husband took my book, but I have a book coming out for the men on June 17th, 2018 called this healing time men hurt too, to help the men, your book, to help the men, um, be, get to where they need to be to, for us to understand that men are human beings first. They hurt too. They need help too. They need to heal. They've been programmed with some bad information. I have three boys. And then I'm after I say this, I'm going to get off of here. I have three boys that I have given poor information to. Thank God I learned and we're course corrected now, but they're 23, 18, and 9. And I learned some things on my journey about men. They have learned so much from me. Not the words that came out of my mouth, but by my actions. And I did not realize how it had affected them as men, because in every, inside every boy, there is a grown man that's being nurtured, that's being matured, that's being groomed, that's being taught. And nine times out of 10 in the world that we live in now is being nurtured, groomed, and matured and taught by a single mother. So my actions created their blueprint my actions created things inside of them that when they go to a woman and marry her, there's some things that are going to show up. That's why I had the course correct. I'm like, yo, I don't want him to do this to anybody's daughter because he saw me cheat on his father. I don't want him to be paranoid that he could never trust a woman because he saw me cheat on his father. I don't want him to hate or be paranoid that... I don't want him to hate or be paranoid that somebody's going to take his wife. So I had the course correct. 
I had to do some different things in my life in order for my sons to thrive. And nobody goes back for the men who have been raised by women who are broken, damaged, and were raising boys when they were immature. I was just immature. I ain't know nothing about no, my sons is watching me throw back 24 shots from the stairs while I'm having a party in my house and everybody is drinking and smoking and partying and making noise. And then somebody over here in the corner arguing and somebody calling somebody a bitch. I didn't know all of that at the time because I was immature that it was affecting my sons and molding them into the men that they are called to be, that they not called to be, but they not getting a proper input. So if they went out in the world, had I not changed my life around and was just destructive to women, who, you got to look at somebody and hold them accountable and that would be me. So I was either going to send out a wrecking ball, three wrecking balls, I was going to send out three whole men and I chose whole men. I chose to change my life and I chose to share with my sons on my journey. These are the mistakes that I made. Cheating is not normal. Telling you to lie to your father was not normal. I apologize. So some of you mothers have a conversation with your sons, but go to my website, TreyKearney.com and listen to, um, go to my website and listen to the recording that's on there. I love you guys. I will see you tomorrow, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for Coffee with Tea. Peace and blessings. Remember what I tell you at the end of all my broadcasts, you deserve the best. Yes, I'm talking to you. You deserve the best. Now go get it. Peace and blessings. And remember Psalm 147.3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Psalm 147.3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. If you would like to do a coaching session with me, please email me, Trey at TreyKearney.com. Thank you, Evange AEJ. Trey at TreyKearney.com. You're cool too. And it's Trey, T-R-A-Y, T-R-A-Y at Trey, T-R-A-Y, Kearney, K-E-A-R-N-E-Y, dot com and i'm here if you need me and let's let's grow together all right love y'all peace